Yeah, pour it in. <laughs> that looks good. It's good. Dribbling. <laughs> we are officially live. Hello, Classic. everyone. Hi, everybody. I'm up. Uh, we were a little late. We were a little late today. <laughs> I've already spilled the tea. We haven't even started. It was yet. a good start. <laughs> good introduction. <laughs> oh my gosh. Whew. Okay, we want to begin today. First of all, hi. Thank you for dropping in on a Tuesday night. Hi everyone. Or Wednesday morning. Hello, hello. <laughs> Depending on where you are. Um, and we want to just let you know that it's. 30 between 33 and 35 degrees celsius wow. in this room we don't have air conditioning so we have the window open we have a fan on so if there's a little bit of ambient noise we apologize but we are <laughs> trying not to roast our brains <laughs> yeah mm. no brain roasting but uh i've got um honey ginger iced tea this afternoon so that's, that's my, my cool drink mm. and that's nice feels good on the throat uh. So, how I is everybody? I should share this uh, with our 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 fans here. Sure. If uh, those of you, I don't know if you can do it on tablets and phones. I'm not sure about phones or tablets, but if you're on a PC or a laptop, you can pop out the chat. Oh yeah. And it and it makes the chat box in a much bigger window, yeah. and it's a lot easier to to view it, it, participate, uh, type in it. So yeah. For those of you if that you're aren't on a aware of that, or a laptop. Yeah. yeah, there's like these three little buttons at the top of the chat box, and you just click on it, and one of them says "Pop out chat," and you can pop the chat out. It literally goes boom. Yeah, pop. And then you can make it bigger if you want, and that's especially if you want to sort of be able to see a little more what's going it's on. It's awesome. But, uh, yeah, I, I prefer it so much. <laughs> whenever we're having, uh, whenever we premiere a Friday video, and both Mister and Stitches and I are logged in and talking to you guys in the chat that's what we do we pop that thing out so we can sort of see more of what's going on <laughs> oh, anyway uh we thought it's so hot <laughs> i don't feel like working on a blanket or any kind <laughs> of big heavy crochet project but i really wanted to do some crafting i feel i feel i felt like in a particularly crafty mood today so we thought we would hang out with you guys and we had a whole bunch of requests on the Anklet. So we just did a crochet beaded anklet. Whoa. Oh, does that make a difference? I bet it does. It's brighter. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. We forgot we were, to turn the light we on. We were in the dark the whole time. <laughs> no, you looked fine. It's just even brighter like this. It's uh, it's going to get darker if the, the sun starts to go down. Lighting you up like a little angel. Thanks. And I oh, little, little just bonus. need the halo. <laughs> Mine's tarnished. <laughs> um, okay, before we, we're getting lots of hellos. Hi. Hello from all over the world. It's wonderful. Um, I would like um, everyone to confirm if you can see Jada okay and if you can hear us okay. <laughs> yeah, can you hear us okay? She says getting quiet. Nobody says <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we get totally silent. <laughs> it's so great. Um, yes, yeah, yes, perfect. Good. All good. Yes, good yes, okay. There. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, great. Okay. Yep, we're good. So... We need one more tech, one more tech, oh, one more tech thing? assistance from our Oh, our sure. Fans. Do you want to do that now? Do you want to do it now or later? Well, you just, you just Let's do it, now. it up. So. <laughs> okay, so we have one more request. <laughs> we need you guys to let us know if the crochet hook is in Jada's right hand from your perspective or her left hand. So you can pretend that you're working. Yeah, so here working, I am. Working, work, work. <laughs> okay, so Aaron says right, right. right Addison, right Elizabeth, side. right, okay. right. Okay, we got Perfect. it right. woo -hoo! <laughs> All right, we are good to Technical go. Technical issues, go. All yes. Right. Marvelous. Okay, Um. so a little while ago, we did, uh, this was two Fridays ago, we would made a beaded crochet anklet using some crochet thread and some simple little glass seed beads. Uh, actually, these really aren't seed beads. They're a bit bigger than seed beads. Um, I don't even think they really have a name. This doesn't really say anything on them. They're just, they're like two or three millimeters in diameter. So they're pretty small still, but they're not quite seed size, which is even smaller. <laughs> um, 
But we made these and uh, there were a lot of requests to see um, a necklace version and a bracelet version of this. So I'm going to say up front that if you have trouble kind of following along with what we're doing today, you can go and check out the video that we did because all of the information will be in it. And of course, it'll be a nice clear tutorial as opposed to one of our live streams, <laughs> which can be a little muddled sometimes. <laughs> um, but basically what we're going to do is just create a choker version of this. And we thought it would also be kind of neat to show you how to put in a pendant. So like, for example, if you wanted a little pendant hanging in the middle, this style of choker, especially like a choker with a little pendant, was really popular back in the 90s, back in my my hot high school days. <laughs> um, and I see back when them- you were spicy. Back when I was spicy. Uh, I see them coming back into vogue all over the place. In fact, I'm going to say that pretty much anything that was ever in vogue is in vogue again because everything's on the internet and everybody has a chance to say, oh, I like that. That style suits me perfectly. So um, anyway, back to back to choke. I loved chokers. I thought they were really, really neat. And I loved making my own. I made a lot of chokers back in the day. In fact, I still have a bunch. But anyway, we're going to do that. And I'm going to show you how you can also. Sherry in... says they were hot in the 70s, too. Yeah. Well, that's probably why they were hot in the that, 90s. That's about, that's about every, the, 20 years, every 20 right? years. Every 20 years, the yeah. trends seem to, seem to go back. I, I have to say, you don't notice yourself getting older. And <laughs> ladies, I know you can probably. Metamucil martini, anyone? <laughs> Hey, you want to pass me that lumbar pillow? <laughs> I think, um, you, you know, when you when you get older, I, when you're in high school and you're looking at people who are like your parents' age, you're kind of rolling your eyes going, oh, my gosh, you're like these older people. They just don't get me. Or they, you know, like high school for you was like a thousand years ago. <laughs> and then you graduate and then all of a sudden 20 years goes by in a blink because you're so busy, like, you know, getting your life on track, you know, and finding a a spouse and getting a house or you know like so putting down some roots and all of a sudden you kind of like surface and 20 years have gone by and and you've got today's teenagers kind of looking at you going oh, you're so, you're so old. old like when were you in high school like <laughs> back at the turn of the last century actually before the turn of the last century as a matter of fact but I, I it, it came home to me a couple of summers ago I was out um, clothes shopping with my sister-in-law and when we were in high school, so back in the 90s, it was really cool for a short period of time to wear overalls, but like with one strap undone. So everybody was sort of walking around with just like one overall strap, keeping their entire ensemble kind of up. And that was a thing. And I had completely forgotten about it, you know, because why would I remember something like that? Until a couple summers ago, I was out clothes shopping and a couple of girls came in and they were looking at at um, at these these overalls and one of the one of the pictures on the wall of the model wearing it was she was wearing it with just one sus one suspender hooked up and one of the girls was like oh yeah and she tried it on she came out with just the one suspender on and I remember <laughs> rolling my eyes and going oh that was dumb then and it's dumb now and I thought oh my gosh I'm an old person <laughs> <laughs> and then I immediately smacked myself in the thought I probably I probably thought that was cool <laughs> when I was a teenager. I don't remember, but I remembered the look and I hadn't seen it in 20 years and I realized it was 20 years and I felt old and that's my story. <laughs> anyway, chokers, right? <laughs> okay. Back to chokers. <laughs> back to chokers. So we're gonna use the same concept that we did for the anklet that we made a couple of Fridays ago, because I just I love how this looks. It is really simple. It's basically you create one row of V stitch and then you wear it upside down. So all the little beads sit in the middle of the V stitch. I think that's it's also very dainty, makes for a very nice choker. But we're also going to show you a couple things today. So if you want to just um, if you've got let me get my beads out here. So if you've got a little pendant like this. Um, there's this is a little tiny little moon and it's got a built in ring to it. You can hold it a little closer. Hold it a little yep. closer. How's yep. that? Yep. So if you there's got, the ring, I can see the ring okay. now. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna put my hand. There you go. It. Yeah. If you've got a, a pendant like this with a built in ring, then you need to pre-thread it onto your thread, like you do your beads. I'm gonna show you that. <laughs> it's out of tune. Wow. <laughs> I have to put it in tune. Katie, uh, Katie Sura, Saras, I'm sorry about butchering your last name. I'm just going to say Katie. Katie. Hi, Katie. <laughs> Katie you. gave us a super oh, chat. Thank you, Katie. And she asked if I would play the ukulele. Mm -hmm. But um, we haven't really picked this little guy up in a while. So you He's should tune in. He's oh, a little off. Nice. 
Yeah. Quite a, oh, well, play, play a... Oh, there it is. I give up. It's got a little blues going there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stick to the bell today. Oh, yeah, that's that's nice. We do have the ukulele though. We just need to like tune he it. It needs to be tuned. It's, to be it tuned. Gets, it gets it's hot so hot and humid, and humid he that would... even if we do tune it in half an hour, he'll be out of. Yeah, tune. he'll go out of tune in about <laughs> five minutes. It's woo, it's warm. Yeah. Woo. So if I if I suddenly look like I'm having a stroke or I pass out here during midstream, it's okay. It's just the heat. <laughs> anyway, big thank you to Katie for thank the you, super Katie. chat. Marvelous. Um, yeah, so if, if you're going to put on a pendant and it's got a built-in ring, you have to pre-thread it on your thread like you do your buttons, your beads, I should say, and then we'll get to that. But if you have a pendant that's got a jump ring, and a jump ring is a little metal ring that's open. So if you've got pliers, you can sort of pry it open and then you can squeeze it back together again. That's called a jump ring. And if you've got a pendant with a jump ring in it, technically you can just add that pendant on after the fact because you can open the jump ring thread it over top of your crochet and then close the jump ring again. So if you're going to add a pendant that way, you don't have to worry about pre-threading it. Ooh. It is hot. Yeah. How are you doing? You I to... can't play the ukulele. No. <laughs> it's too hot. I can barely, I can barely pick up this bell. You've got a, you've got a beautiful uh, glimmery Am shimmer. I right? <laughs> that, this is as far as I'm going today. Is... <laughs> it's so hot. we have, a few things to get oh, to. Oh, okay, sure. I don't know if we should save these like to the end so you can get We're gonna the tutorial. We're going to be here for a while. Yeah, so, yeah no, they're just <laughs> jump in whatever you want. <laughs> so a uh, big thank you to Tarina for the sticker. Thank you, Tarina. Um, it's, uh, it says here, and there's an arrow. <laughs> and uh, another big thank you to Katie. Thank who you, Katie. Gave us another super chat. Says thank you, <laughs> and You're it's welcome. Swa Suarez. Suarez. That's how you Suarez. pronounce her name. Suarez. Suarez. Thank you very much. Like Suarez. <laughs> Suarez. Which is like a like, like a, a soiree. Like an evening party, and then I don't know. I just... uh, <laughs> no, we do not have air conditioning. No, we don't. We do not have air conditioning. We have we have fans. We have open windows, <laughs> and we have um, limited patience. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've got some cool drinks uh, although my ice has already melted both in the pitcher and in my thing but it's, it's still kind of cold to the touch i'm having um, iced ginger honey tea which is quite tasty all right so we'll keep hydrated the other pendant uh concept you might want to think of is if you wanted to make your own pendant um so this is a crochet covered button and this is, uh, we did a crochet covered button tutorial. This is a slightly different pattern. In fact, I think the one in the tutorial is a little more fancy, but this one is just sort of a simple little um, covered button. And you can, so if you don't have a pendant, you can certainly make one if you've got some buttons lying around. This button is probably a little over an inch in diameter. So it's a larger button, but you can use, you can use smaller ones. Actually, I've got that pretty little yellow one. I might cover that one this evening too. Um, so I thought I would sort of show you a handful of things and then we would sort of talk about the math on figuring out how to make your choker fit you or someone else. Um, but first and form, first things first to talk about the pendant. So if it's got a built-in ring, you have to pre-thread it. If it's got a jump ring or you're going to add a jump ring, then you don't have to pre-thread it. Um, and because we're pre-threading our beads on our thread, if you're going to pre-thread a pendant, obviously you want it to end up being in the middle. You want it to be opposite the ties at the back of your necklace. So you can figure out exactly how many beads you need by taking one extra step when you make your necklace. And the same thing goes if you wanted to put a pendant on an anklet or a bracelet. It's uh, so for those of you who like, you know, don't like chaining with thread, this might be a bit annoying, but it does work. So in the bracelet or the anklet tutorial, I should say in the anklet tutorial, because we're using a, um, a V stitch pattern, you have to do a foundation row of chains that is a multiple of three. So a multiple of three to begin. And you just looked at me. Do you do you have um, something I'm looking at, my forehead? Uh, no. Um... Someone asked if the book behind you is crochet. The book is not. The bookmark is. Yeah, the bookmark is. And we do have a tutorial for that. Uh, there's this little, little tail. I was going to answer it in the chat. Yeah, yeah, we do have a tutorial for that. Oh, and there's a free pattern on our website yeah. for that, too. Yeah, if you go to our website, there's a free written pattern. Yeah, and I'm... then the tutorial, the video tutorial to go Another along with it. Another cute use of a button. 
<laughs> in the center there. I will plug that. Um, our website page with I, the free pattern. Uh, I made a whole bunch of those. I've got. I've been reading all summer, so I've got. Do, do, I've do, got do, flowery do, bookmarks do, do, do. for the house. Um, yes. So we need a foundation chain that is a multiple of three to begin. It's the same with the bracelet. It's the same with the anklet. It's the same if you're going to make a choker. If you want to figure out exactly how many beads you need so that you can pre-string them plus a pendant, knowing exactly where you need to put a pendant, then you want to chain a foundation that goes either around your, your wrist or your ankle or your neck, whatever you're doing. Today, I'm going to be doing my neck. So chain a foundation that fits neatly around your neck or whatever part you're going to wear it on. That's a perfect multiple of three. Do that first. Count it up. Make sure it's a multiple of three. And then you might need a calculator. Divide that multiple of three by three. <laughs> and it will tell you exactly how many beads you need to put into your choker or your necklace or your, I should say, your bracelet or your anklet. You also need to add two more beads to that so that you've got a couple of little doohickeys um, to sort of wear on the end. And I'll get to when you put where, where, where you would need to put your pendant. <laughs> Take a cool drink uh, a cool break. I'm going to cool my brain down. We have a super chat from Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. And Michelle says, this is such a nice break during the week. Thank you both with lots of stars. Well, thank you for joining us. Yeah, and thank you for the super chat. It's nice to do it again in the evening. We haven't done an evening tutorial or an evening live, I guess, for a while because um, usually we, we're sort of busy during the, busy during the day. Um, but the sun is starting to set, so it's starting to cool down, and we figured this might be the better part of the day. You know yet. what? I'm <laughs> going gonna, I'm gonna to move the fan in closer, sure. and I'd like everyone to let us know if like you, if it's interrupting the, yeah, the sure. microphone. Sure. That way we cool down. Just so we more. cool down a little bit more. It is, it is pretty hot in here. Um, okay, so where was I? Multiple of three, perfect multiple of three around your neck. Chain it out. Count it. Make sure it's a perfect multiple of three. Divide that number by three. And that will give you the exact number of beads you will need for each of your V stitches. And then you're going to add two more beads and then have your pendant handy. Um, and that's how many beads you need to thread onto your thread. So that works for the choker, the bracelet, or the anklet. Now, how do you get your beads onto the thread after you've already chained it? Well, that's the annoying part. You have to take the whole thing out and then thread all your beads. But at least you know exactly how many chains you need to do um, to fit around your neck. So that is how you figure out exactly how many beads you want. And the reason you would want to know exactly how many beads is so let's say, um, let's say I haven't figured this out yet, but let's say my neck is, I don't know, 90. Let's say it's 90 chains to fit all the way around my neck tightly. Well, if you divide 90 by three, you get 30. That means I need 30 beads for the base of my necklace and 15 beads into the threading, I would, thread on my pendant so that I knew it would come in immediately halfway through the necklace. Then you want to add an extra two beads on at the end. Um, actually, you would put the two beads on for your dangly bits first because they're the last beads to get used. So you put on your first two beads and then you'd put in the first half of your beads, put on your pendant, put on the last half of your beads. Now, if you have an exact even number, like say 30, then you're going to have 15 and then one of these and you'd end up with an extra bead because your pendant's going to sit right in the middle of your um, right in the middle of your necklace. And that's going to displace a bead unless you put the bead and the pendant next to each other. But I don't know how that would look. I've never done it. Um, so if you're putting in a pendant, you can either opt to displace a bead or squish them both into the same little V stitch. And I'm thinking I might just displace it for the sake of the argument tonight. Um, so because I want to sort of put my money where my mouth is. <laughs> I've got a whole bunch of threads here. So I'm using crochet thread. This is your typical size 10. So it's not the super, super tiny stuff like oh, the that's 30. that's so much better. Oh yeah, I can feel it. The fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> I, 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 I was about to melt under the table. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm using a size 10 crochet thread. And I pulled out a whole bunch of different colors um, for this evening because I wasn't really sure what I'm going to do. But I think I'm going to go with this dark green because as I'm showing a couple of little things, I think it'll show up best against the little white uh, wooden table here. So first, I'm going to 
take a bunch of this off. I'm going to start chaining threes and I'm going to see how many chains it takes to get all the way around my neck in a comfortable choke, not a tight choke. I want to be able to wear this and enjoy it. Um, so I'm just going to start chaining and then I'll count. So if I'm not, if I happen to be not paying attention because I'm trying to read comments, sure. you just go uh, craft table, go to the craft table. Yeah, yeah, okay. I think I tried that the last Going time. Going to my face table. Paying attention. Craft table, face table. Craft table, face table. Craft table. That'll face be the code. Table. That's code. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. So right now it's the face table. And they table. can even if you if, if you for some reason don't hear me, everybody can can say or that in the chat. Or if you keep talking to me and I don't respond, <laughs> call 911. <laughs> Heat stroke. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> I'm I'm uh, I can I can feel I can feel myself like actually that that you moved it and so it feels better like i have to say that that uh, having moved the fan feels a little bit better i'm not quite as hot but, uh, oh yeah that's nice I that think it's is a bit great of a, a bit of a breeze. okay here we go how am i where am i at it's gonna fit around my neck yet I don't uh, what so. size hook are you using right i'm now? using a 2.25 millimeter hook but you can use anything in that neighborhood. I think the um, we have a free pattern for the, the anklet on our, our website too. Um, and I think in the pattern I said a 2.75 and in the video I said a 2.25. And that's basically because anywhere in that neighborhood, a size two millimeter, 2.25, 2.5, 2.75, even a three um, is just fine uh, because it's a, it's, a, it's a wearable piece based on a measurement and less a set number of chains. So we're going for a multiple of three, but it can be any multiple of three, and that's so it fits comfortably around, you know, whatever whatever appendage you want to wear this on. Okay, this is too big, so I made too many chains. So I'm going to take some out. I'll take it back to there. And I want the, oops, I want the end to meet the, I want the ends to meet comfortably. Uh, and remember, when we did the anklet, we're still putting on a loop to tie it. So it's not going to be this tight around your neck. So I'm going for a snug fit because I know that I know that's going to be a it's going to be that little thing. I still think this may be too tight. Nope, not tight well, enough. Well, it is going to be a choker. It right? is a choker. <laughs> I want it to sit kind of, I want the pendant want to kind of pendant. sit right oh, here. Oh, okay, yeah. So, a little right, bit, a little, little more? A little more. Are you going to, are you going to chain a little off? Yeah, no, it gets you, you, there's a little like loop that you tie it up with, I see. which gives you um, some more. Plus, you're tying it on, so you can always tie it loosely if you feel it's like, I think too you tight. Need more than that. No, because there's going to be like a tie. I want the ends to meet oh, I snugly, see. Yeah, and I that's pretty I good. I couldn't see it. Okay, so, okay, now I'm just going to quickly count these Ooh. up. <laughs> we have a hilarious uh, sticker from Sherry. Aww. It's uh, a guy like sweating. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. That's me. You've nailed it. Oh, yes, I can I can I can feel it. It's quite warm. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 30, Okay, I'm going to take out one more. All right, so what did I say? 90... Three? I think I said 93. Someone wrote 93 here. Yeah, 93. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if that might be a temperature somewhere. <laughs> I think that's about what it feels like. It might be a temperature. It feels like 93 Celsius. <laughs> I think I, I counted 93. So 93 divided by 3 would be 31. So perfect. 31 cut in half because oh. um, I want to displace a bead, which means I'm going to go with 15, the pendant, and then 15 beads. So I need to count out 32 beads, because I need two for the dangly bits at the end. I need 15 for either half of the necklace, and then I'm going to put my little pendant in the middle. So I'm going to use this green, I'm going to use this green thread. So I'm going to take it all out. And now I know that I need 30 plus two beads and my pendant. So now I get to pick 
beads. You guys can help me. I've got, so keep in mind, I'm using this nice dark green thread and I have this pretty kind of brass colored little moon, which I think is so cute. I have some gold beads. I've got a creamy, it's kind of a, almost like a pearly pinky cream. I've got a, a, a pearlescent lilac pink, a much yellower pearlescent yellow, a solid light blue. I'm gonna say that's a sky blue. Then I've got, uh, these I think are too small, but these guys are a sort of a garnet color. And then I've got um, an, a sort of a slightly darker blue, a very pretty um, opalescent kind of a purpley pink color, sort of a, a light magenta. <laughs> and then I've got more lavender beads. And then I have these bugle beads, but I don't think, I think the bugle beads hole is too small for me to get through. So just the round beads. Tonight. So just to recap, we've got Dark, we've got water blue, sky blue, uh, a light pearly magenta or an opalescent magenta. We've got a nice dark wine or a garnet colored bead. We've got lilac, um, kind of a creamy, buttery, opalescent color, light bubblegum pink, uh, light baby yellow, sky blue, and gold. So what's everybody think I should use, again, with my dark green? Right off the top, I'm thinking... The garnet would be nice, and the gold would be a nice contrast, but I think the garnet would be uh, We're pretty. getting a lot of uh, suggestions for gold. The gold one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was kind of my first thought. Light blue. Someone said gold or cream. Light blue, gold, 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 gold. We're going to go gold. Gold, pink, <laughs> uh, creamy pink and magenta. Yeah. I could I could also use multiple colors. Like there's no reason why yeah, I can't. Just, I would like, say I would say it's overwhelming gold. We're going for, with gold. If, if we're gonna vote. Okay. Yeah. So let's make sure that I can get these are pretty small holes. So <laughs> the next question is can I get the thread through them? Dun 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 dun. dun. Oh, it might be a tight fit. How is the uh, image tonight, everyone? Can you see Jada clearly? We did feed the squirrels. I actually went and got them like the premium nuts oh, and premium it. seeds today. Oh, come here. Come here, you. Uh, in the hopes that they would leave us alone. It's true. You did. You went out. You braved Like the I got world. the good stuff. Oh, this is going to be a. Everyone says it's great. It's clear and it looks good. I wonder if I can get Excellent. It. I don't think I can get that threaded through this. Uh, you know what, guys? The gold might be off the table. <laughs> Well, you're gonna have to go. You're gonna have to choose with the I, biggest holes. I could then, have sworn. Right? I could have sworn the holes were a little well, bit which, bigger. Well, which which ones have bigger holes? Um, we'll let everyone vote on. Well, those. all the other colors, of course. Go gold! We have a super chat from Anna Victoria. Hey Anna, thank you. Anna Victoria says, "Go go go gold!" Salute from Cancun. Oh, how nice! I bet you it's warm there. I bet you the weather's beautiful. I don't. Go They're right on the water. I don't know if I can. Oh, wait. Yes, I can. Oh, it's going to take me a bit, but I can do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go with the gold. These are smaller than the ones I used for the anklet, but that's okay. It's going to make for an even daintier look. Oh, you can. I can do it. You. I'm going to do it. So I need to do. In this heat, even. In this heat. I'm surprised that little string hasn't melted. Just and like just erupted kind of... in flame. <laughs> I think I need to trim this a We're little bit. We're still getting a lot of um, uh, votes for gold. We're All also right. getting pink, purple. Do you want to pick out the ones with bigger holes? And we'll see what... Well, uh, I'm, I'm doing my best here. Um, that's five. So I want to get these threaded on here. One. Four. Yep. I do like that. Maybe you'll have to make them sparse. You know what? I don't know if I can do this. I mean, I can, but I might be here all night. <laughs> I don't think I have that much uh, <laughs> that much water in me for all night. Yeah, this is, they keep splitting. Okay, guys, sorry, gold is off the table. I'm going to be They're here too, all The holes are too, too small. Too, okay, sorry, so everyone. The We're next gonna... closest would be um, this.
pearly cream. Well, let's I'll tell you what. Let's let's nice. hold another vote. So pick up okay. pick up the ones with the biggest holes. Okay, so and we'll hold another. Vote. The ones with the biggest holes here are the cream, the creamy kind of ice creamy vanilla colored ones, lavender, pink, yellow, and blue. And again, it's going on a dark green thread. So those ones all have big holes. And over here. Lavender, um, this magenta, the garnet, um, these guys are too small, and the, the blue have a decent sized hole, so I could go with the, the watery blue too, but I think that's just too, I think that blue would probably blend in with the green, so. Okay, so what are the choices? So ice cream, so vanilla. Vanilla. Baby yellow. Baby yellow. Sky blue. Sky blue. Bubblegum pink. Oh my goodness, bubblegum, so all of them. Lavender, basically. yeah. <laughs> Got lots of lavender. All right, I'll start reading out what, what everyone is saying here. We got cream, 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 pearly cream, 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 purple, blue and pink. I think pink, cream and lavender, cream and vanilla, lavender. cream, lavender, baby yellow, garnet. Um, it sounds like cream is winning. Well, cream does have a larger hole, so I think I can I can sort of get a bunch um, of those on. Okay. I'm going to go with the cream. Executive decision. Thanks, everybody, for your help. And now I need to, so it was it was 31. I'm displacing one in because I'm going to use the pendant. So it's going to be, I need to put on two plus 15, the pendant, and then 15. So that's my first, that's what I'm going to, oh, this is going to go much easier. Excellent. Super hot, super chat. Super hot, super chat. We have a super chat from Every Color Kel. Aw, thank you, Kel. What a cute name. I like that. <laughs> uh, Kel says... Every color Cal says, Jada, could you crochet around multiple buttons and then crochet them together for a great big necklace piece? I think so. Yeah. Um, there's a few you could crochet around. It depends on how you want the necklace to lie, but I think, <laughs> I mean, anything is possible. Um, I like that. I'm trying to think if it would be. What if uh, what if we have that tutorial where you crochet over the buttons? Yep. What, if, what if you just, um, just well, you could string a bunch string of them together. Those together. But I'm just thinking. Um, I I think I understand what what every color Kel is suggesting. It's that you would you would kind of do a link whole bunch as you go. and then link them together, probably mm. across the top and the bottom, which would look quite chic. Yeah, that looked good. Yeah, yeah. Great, of course great you idea. Do that. Of course you can. Do that. Um, we have another super chat <laughs> from Anna. Thank you, Anna. Um, Anna from Can I think this is the same Anna from Cancun. Let me see here. Anna from Can Anna Anna from Canada. <laughs> yeah, it's Anna from Cancun. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. So another super chat, and Anna says, "Garnet, this is fun." <laughs> Thank you. It is fun. I like it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I we have a bunch of more suggestions that came in. Do you want me to continue reading? Well, or I'm did sure. You make your, make I'm going your to. Choice? You know what? I'm probably. I'm definitely going to do. And I'm happy. This. So there's I'm still continue. a lot. There's still a lot of cream as a suggestion, but there's also a lot of lavender. I'll all probably, of a sudden, I'll probably make a few of these. So. Yeah, maybe we'll have to make more than one. I just love how these come together. I should have picked up an air conditioner on my way home from getting the squirrel food. <laughs> it's. I can feel the breeze, like since you moved the the fan. So yeah, it made a big difference. Everyone said that it's not interfering with the, the microphone, okay. so I'm going to come even closer. All right. You're going to be, like, sitting on it. Here. <laughs> <laughs> that would, I'd be like, uh, oh, we got a super chat. It would totally change. <laughs> that is so much better. Let us know if it's interfering with the microphone, everyone. Well. Okay. 13. <laughs> yes, Janet, we also, we feed the squirrels and uh, the chipmunks in the back and all the birds. Yep. And we also, we don't just give them nuts and seeds. We also give them fruit and vegetables. Yes. Two, four, we ten, try to, well we try to mix it. their diet and we have fresh water for them too. Six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Okay. There's 15, but I still need two. For the dangly bits, and then I'm going to put on my pendant. Uh, thank you, Teresa, for letting us know that you don't hear the fan. I appreciate that. Oh, good. Because okay, we can't so tell from this angle. 
All right, so just a quick, quick, quick little catch up. I have pre-strung, so there's my two beads that are going to end up on the ends of my ties. So because we make the ties last, those beads have to go on first. So there's two, there's 15. And now I'm gonna string on my pendant, which is this cute little moon smiling. There we go. And now 15 more beads and then I can start crocheting. So this is going along a lot quicker than the gold did. And I think this is going to so look So you're really able nice. to get those in easily. Yeah, I can string these without It's better for a live stream. It is. I can do one later. <laughs> I can fight yeah, my way can, through we, the, the gold we one. Can do, um, we can do another video after that we can edit, speed up. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So this took us three weeks to produce because <laughs> <laughs> we were both trying to get the gold <laughs> beads onto the string. This is, I, I've always loved stringing beads onto thread, whether I did it with a, um, like with a, a needle or if I just had to sort of sit there and try to thread the bead with the, <laughs> with the thread. It, it's very, it's very therapeutic. And it's nice, it's nice summer crafting kind of, it's good for the hot weather because it doesn't require a gigantic amount of, of exertion and also unlike crochet um you don't end up with something sort of hot sitting on your lap which is kind of nice so i love i've loved lately i've been i've been able to get through some works in progress and get them finished but we've just been in the middle of a heat wave and there's <laughs> i look at i look at the crochet sitting on my desk and i'm like sorry not today <laughs> I got here two four five six seven eight seven more um deborah if you'd like to send a super chat you just have to click on there is a little button Actually, I can't see it here because I'm in the popped out screen. There's a little button underneath the chat box that's, I think it's a dollar sign or a smiley face. I'm not sure, one of the two. And then you have the option to send a super chat or a sticker. And speaking of that, <laughs> we have a new member Yay! who joined um, our silk tier. Big thank you to Diane. Thanks for joining. Thank you for joining, Diane. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think that means I need another sip of my, <laughs> my tea. You need more cool water. <laughs> Love it. All right. How am I doing here? Let's count it up. I need 15 on this side. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. One more. Then we can start crocheting. <laughs> All right. Oh, come on. Okay, I'm getting in trouble for not having an air conditioner. I think we need to clarify <laughs> oh, yeah. why we don't have... We don't a have an air conditioner because I... Um, we have hot weather for usually a short period of time every year, but I am the one who doesn't like air conditioning. I worked in a building for a long time that had air conditioning, and it bothers me. I feel like I, I get dried out or I can't breathe or something. It, it drives me crazy. So I am not a fan of air conditioning. I don't mind it on in the car, you know, for a little short drives here and there. But if I'm going to like sleep or if I'm going to be in a building for a long period of time, then I, I just, I please open the windows, open the windows. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, um, we are in a room that gets warm. Yes. We have other areas um we have other areas in the house that, um, you know, as long as the blinds are drawn and we got a, a fan on, it's like perfectly comfortable, even in hot weather. So, yeah. so usually we're, we're hanging around in that area. Um, but we set up in this room and uh, it's hot. You know what, though? I mean, it's the breeze is coming through and the fan it's is nice. blowing the air yeah, around. And the sun so is going down. Not so so it's, not it's, so bad. it's not so bad now. <laughs> I think everyone's concerned. 
we might pass out on live television here, live stream. That right, would I'll be, change the title of the it video. It would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> Heat stroke live. <laughs> YouTuber passes out from heat heat stroke live stream. Yeah, that's that's just yeah. That's how you want to get famous. That's how you want to. That's <laughs> how you want the mainstream media to pick you up. Okay, I'm just counting in my head here. Eighty-five, ninety, and Ooh. ninety-three. Okay. <laughs> so to recap, I figured out that I need 93 base chains for my choker because it has to be a multiple of three that fits tightly around my neck. When I divide the number 93 by three, I get 31 because I want to pre-string a little pendant on there. I am putting in the pendant in lieu of a bead, which is perfect because then I have 30 beads, not 31. I also need two extra beads for the little dangly ties. So those two beads go on first, then the 15, then the pendant, then the other 15 beads. I have crocheted a foundation chain row of 93. So that's my base. Now I want to add, this is the same whether you're doing a necklace or a bracelet or an anklet. After you've got your base set of a multiple of three, you're going to add, you're going to chain an additional 10. So we're going to chain 10. One, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's ten, <clears throat> excuse me, ten. Then you're going to find the eight chain from the hook. So you just count back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So found the eighth chain back from the hook and I'm just going to slip stitch into it to make a loop. Now, like we said, we've got a full tutorial on how to make the the anklet version of this. So the math is exactly the same, but today we just wanted to sort of show you how you can elongate it a little bit and how to work out the math to put in a pendant. So that's pretty much all we're doing here. So once you've slip stitched into the eighth chain from the hook, you've got a little loop now. I don't know if you can see that there, a little loop going. That's what you're going to use um, to tie your necklace on with. You're gonna slip stitch into the chain next to that. And now we're gonna start our B stitch slide up a bead pattern. So again, this is all detailed in the tutorial, but we chain three to begin. That chain three counts as a double crochet. So you wanna start the pattern with a double crochet and you wanna end the pattern with a double crochet. We're gonna skip one chain, find the next one, and we're gonna start a V stitch. So skip one chain and into the next chain, double crochet and then slide up a bead, chain one around it. And when you're chaining one around a bead, you just sort of like try to pretend the bead isn't there and grab the yarn or the thread that's on the other side of the bead. So you sort of snug the bead up against the hook, chain one around it, and then into that same chain that you just double crocheted, you wanna finish your V stitch and you wanna double crochet into the same stitch. And so basically now what you've done is created a V stitch with a little bead in the middle of it. Then the rest of the pattern, you're going to skip two chains. So two chains skip in between every V stitch. So I'm gonna skip two chains, find the third, and then I'm going to start a V stitch by double crocheting. I'm going to slide up a bead, chain one around it, and double crochet into the same chain. And that's my V stitch completed. So I guess you could call this a beaded V stitch. Um, and that way, you know, it's double crochet, slide up a bead, chain one around the bead, double crochet into the same chain. So all of that happens into the same chain. And then you get this pretty little beaded V stitch. And I'm just going to hold that as, co as close to the camera as I can. I hope you can see that. Um, this looks probably a lot clearer in the tutorial. Same concept, but here we go. <laughs> I'm going to skip two more chains, double crochet, slide up a bead. Chain one around the bead and double crochet into the same chain. All right, so that's three now. I'm just going to continue this until I get up to my pendant. Should we be doing that on the other camera? Yeah, sure. I can do a few of these on the other camera. You want to switch camera? So that camera? everyone can see better. Yeah, Did I sure. miss anything? I had to run away for a minute. 
I have to get some water so that you don't melt. Yeah. Just put that on the ground. Yeah, you want to switch to the other camera, and I will. Actually, I might just keep that on my lap. Sure. There we go. And let me know if, if I can need to do anything. So I'm going to skip. Skip a couple chains. <laughs> Double crochet into the third chain. Slide of a bead. Where's my beads? Chain one around the bead. And so like I was saying, there's the bead. You want to reach to the other side of it and just grab the thread. And just chain one. What made it too tight? There we go. And double crochet into the same chain. And this is the other side. So that is the side that is going to be facing out. So there's sort of like, so it's going to be upside down. Your little V stitches are going to be sort of the, the V part is going to be facing down and the little beads are going to be in the middle of it. Ah, I just think it's so cute and dainty. Looks complicated and it's not. Unless, of course, you're new to working with thread, in which case, be patient. <laughs> working with thread can be tricky. I'm going to see if I can zoom in on your hands a little. Sure. I will attempt. i got to slide up another bead. I think I can. Chain one around my bead and double crochet uh -huh. into the same chain. There we go. Skip two chains. Double crochet into the third chain. Slide up a bead. There we go. Thank you for letting me know. Oh. Appreciate that. You want to go a little to your right? A little to my right? Yeah, I zoomed in, so you're a little off center sure. now. How's that? Perfect. Great. <laughs> a little double crochet. Skip two, double crochet into the third, slide the bead. <laughs> and okay, Anne Marie asks, what is the name of the tutorial we can watch? So were you talking about the the anklet, yeah. The uh, oh, well, anklet that I, you just did. You want to you want to link it? Yeah, I'll go grab it. Um, I don't know if we put it on our list here, but I don't think so. The recent one. Yeah, it's two weeks ago. I think we did. Was it two weeks ago? Yeah. Careful not to. Yeah, you're right. It was two weeks ago. One, two. Double crochet. So, Slide up a bead. Around it. There we go. close to my pendant. I'm getting excited here. <laughs> Looking good. It's uh once you once you get the first few done, the first few V stitches, and you know, and you're sliding up the bead, you kinda it's kind of your fingers sort of fall into a bit of a bit of a rhythm. Can you make this with a size one weight yarn? A sock weight yarn. Yes. Yes you can. Now you're gonna want to make sure that the beads you choose um can fit can be threaded on a sock weight yarn so really there's like of course you can you just need to make sure that your beads have a big hole in them or at least big enough that it, they'll slide through um you can slide over top of some sock weight yarn sock weight yarn is roughly the same weight or thickness as a size one crochet thread and you could 
certainly make a choker or some kind of like beaded jewelry uh, with that thread too. All right, that's my last bead before I slide up my pendant. All right, here we go. So same thing, still skipping two. I start my V-stitch and now I slide up the pendant and I wanna make sure that my pendant is dangling downwards. So I'm going to just, I'm gonna chain a slightly looser chain around that just so it's got a little bit more kind of uh, dangle. <laughs> is that the word I want? And then finish my V-stitch. And that should, yeah, I flip it the right side. So hang on a second. All right, yeah, so let me get a few more done. I'm pretty sure this is gonna hang the right direction, so that's good. And all right, so skip to begin a V stitch, slide up a bead. One, skip two, start a V-stitch, slide up a bead, chain one, and finish the V-stitch. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like. It's going to, so the, the oh yeah, oh that's going to be perfect. Ah, oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> it's got just enough dangle. And it's going to hang facing the right direction. So all my beads are sort of showing. And then my little, my little, my cute little moon is going to be showing. Oh, this is great. Okay, let's switch back to the other camera. Peyton asks, why did you choose green thread? Well, two reasons. One, uh, I thought the green thre thread might show a little better against my fingers and also against the white wooden um, or the light we've got there. Um, plus, I don't have any jewelry in dark green. And I find that that color shows up in a lot of my summer prints. So I thought I thought that would look kind of sharp against my Ooh, kind of dark. Stands out. I think, yeah, it's gonna stand mm -hmm. out kind of nice. Mm -hmm. I have I, I, I have a lot of different colored crochet thread, but, um, and I have a lot of this dark green. I, I don't know where I came by at all, but. I like the color a lot. I really like this dark green. And what is the size of thread you are using? I am again? using a size 10 crochet thread. Um, but like we were saying, you could use size 3, size 1. You could even use size like 30, which is like the crazy, it's practically sewing, <laughs> sewing thread. Um, but I feel like to get that sort of quintessential kind of knotted thread jewelry look, um, the, the crochet threads that are one, three, or five, or ten are probably the best choices. Um, and you can use technically any thread you want, but um, make sure that it doesn't feel itchy, because if you're going to wear it on like your skin, you don't want it to be itchy. Um, and if you're going to put beads on it, you need to make sure that the beads will can be threaded onto the thread you choose. So um, that will also help sort of figure. So again, if you're using like the size five or the size ten crochet thread, it's thinner than the size one or the sock weight yarn. Um, so you'll have an easier time finding beads that will fit onto it. And uh, mm -hmm. I am just gonna finish up with the beading here. Yeah, I think this is gonna be really pretty. I've got, I don't have any dark blue thread otherwise I might have used that. You can also use embroidery floss. Um, that's something we kind of talked about um, or touched on in the anklet tutorial. So uh, embroidery floss is about a size five or three in this is a similar weight to a thread uh, but you could totally use that and of course with embroidery floss not only is it either silk or cotton which makes it smooth and soft um, it's got a bit of a shine, a bit of luster, and embroidery floss comes in a zillion colors. So uh, that's a great choice for making 
some crocheted jewelry. And you'll have more than enough in a little, a little, what do they call those little, little skeins of, uh, of floss? Is it, there's a word for it. Anybody a know? Floss? Yeah. What's the, the little, the stuff that's if like you're going out to buy one? embroidery floss, now if you're going out to buy embroidery floss, it comes in a little, like a little skein, but I think there's a word for it. Anybody, the cross stitchers out there might we'll know. We'll see if they, yeah. Isn't it just thread? It's crochet floss. It's 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 embroidery floss. Embroidery floss. But I'm trying but to think of a, what's the name. Uh, what's the name of someone will know of the the little the little like you know you can buy a ball of yarn. You can buy a, a skein of yarn. You can buy a um you know what I mean. Bonbons, beads. I'm trying to think of what. We'll see what what everyone Maybe there comes, isn't a word what everyone it. comes up with. I don't know. A hank. Oh, a hank? That's a hank of yarn? Yeah. A hank of yarn? I don't think it's a hank, hank of floss. Hank of floss. Is it a hank Diane of floss? Says, yeah. Is it really? I don't know. There's a lot of suggestions coming in. I don't with know. With question marks, might I yeah, add. Yeah, with question marks. I also love how the weight starts to like feel like how, like after you've, you've, you've crocheted a little bit the the weight of the of the piece of jewelry starts to kind of, like the beads start to kind of weigh it down it feels really neat i like that looks like i might have All right, pull, this is my last pull v stitch. Pull schemes. Pull schemes? That sounds familiar. Does that sound right? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Okay. I have worked the last v stitch in my little choker. That leaves me with two chains left. So I hop over one chain and I simply double crochet into the last chain that finishes it off. So whether you're making a, an anklet, a bracelet, whatever, that's how the little pattern ends. Then all I want to do is make a couple of ties, and I still have two beads left on my string, so I can put a, a little bead at the end of each tie. That looks tie. fantastic. It doesn't look. You want to hold it up nice and close to the camera. But how about so. I just like? Oh, let me see if I can zoom in. I can also like <laughs> zoom myself in. You can zoom yourself <laughs> in. Wait, I can do it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, that looks great. Pretty neat, eh? I like it. I like it. It's gonna be really pretty. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think I think the uh, vanilla cream colored beads was a good call, mm. everybody. Thank also, you, everyone. Looks, it, oh, oh my gosh! It looks like little stars. Everyone loves it. It looks like Very stars cute. next to the so moon. So pretty. That is pretty. This is great. Okay. So beautiful. So now we want to build a couple of ties, and you can make the ties as long as you want. I think in the video I did 31. I don't have the pattern in front of me, but I can tell from looks. So if I just chain out one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Thank you, everyone. Seven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. We have the 15, best supportive 16, community. 18, 19, we do. We have the best community. Everybody is everyone so is supportive so kind and so creative. And creative. And they, everybody's got so many great ideas. And you know what? It's nice to sit around with you a bunch what? of people who just want to sit around Since and crochet. We have such an amazing community. Play I'm busting it out. I'm. I can't help it. I know it's <laughs> hot, but. I'll pour myself on. A little more iced tea. Not so icy, right? That was very nice. Thank you. It's my Ooh. not so icy iced tea. I'm going to go take a shower now. <laughs> um, we got a super chat from J JC. JC, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I think I'm going to go with a chain of 21 because I just want to tie this in a little knot behind me. So I don't want too long dangly tails, but 21. I'm going to slide up a bead. Did, <laughs> did JC have anything to say? Yes, JC. Says greetings from Ho Hodgenville, Kentucky. Hodgen, Hodgen Hod Hodgenville. Hod I bet you it's Hottenville, Kentucky, right now. <laughs> I, I would say Hodgen. Hodgen is DG. Yeah. So it's just probably Hodgen. 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 JC. Help. JC will let us know if we Thank pronounce you, it right. <laughs> greetings from JC. Greetings from Kentucky. Yeah. Greetings USA. From Kentucky. Thank you. Beautiful Kentucky, USA. <laughs> Thank you. So um, I, I just just to quickly someone catch up. Uh, Wendy asked if we would put this pattern in our Etsy shop. 
I don't see why not. Yeah, sure. Um, we can also just put it on the put it, but like I, we can also put it up on the website alongside the the anklet. The anklet, since it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, and if you are just popping in now, we have an anklet tutorial where we use the exact same pattern. We just thought today we would show you how to sort of do the math to figure out how many exact beads you need plus where to put a pendant. Um, but we have a tutorial for the anklet that we did two weeks ago, and there's a free pattern to go along with that over on our website. So if you hop over to our website, the link's always in the description box. When you get to our website, just wait for it to load, <laughs> and then go check out all the little page links across the top. And it's the pattern workshop page you oh. want, and just scroll. We've got tons of free patterns there. Maybe you don't pronounce the D. Maybe it's Hoganville. H H Hoganville. Hoganville? Anyway, uh, Kara says that's where Abraham Lincoln was born. Oh, no way. Yeah. So there's some serious history back in Kentucky. I feel like I feel like every little square inch of America probably has some awesome historical story of some sort. <laughs> yeah, for that's, sure. That's kind of like what, what TV has led me to believe anyway. <laughs> Everyone is saying hello. Hello from Louisville. Louisville, Nickel Kentucky. Nicholsville. Nicholsville. A lot of Kentucky. People. Yeah, Nicholsville is VA. What's that? Virginia? What's VA? VA is Virginia. Yes. I'm going to say Virginia. I think that's a state. That's state. Catherine will let us know. Somebody will let us know. Please please forgive our, our terrible understanding of American geography. <laughs> we can barely keep up with the Canadian geography. Oh, like Lodge. Like okay, Lodge. Yeah, like Hodge, Hodge. So I had it right. Okay, yeah, you were right. Hodgeville. Hodgeville. Hodgeville? Isn't that what I said? I don't remember now. <laughs> JC, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Marionette, Wisconsin. Hello from California. Virginia. Yes, I got it right. Thank you. So that's 21 chains <laughs> for my second tie. I'm just threading up my bead. So when I'm doing when I'm beading at the end of a tie, I just push up the bead and then I just sort of ignore it and I can and I slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. This is actually easier than chaining one around it. I feel. I mean, maybe it's because I've done it so many times now, it doesn't feel that difficult. But then it just sort of sits at the end of your little tie. And it's kind of cute. I think <clears> it's a cute way to sort of finish off the tie and put a little bit of weight on the tie. All right. So I'm just finishing up here. I'm slip stitching back through each chain in my second tie. I'm going to have two ties on just like um, on the on the bracelet or the anklet, I should say. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you're following along with that tutorial later, just sort of to get a, a better visual um, or you take a, take out the uh, the free pattern and print that off and kind of keep it on you too. Same thing. So we're, we we begin and end whatever you're making the same way. So if you're making the ties, um, you want to sort of put a little bead at the end of it. I, I love how jewelry looks when it's sort of tied on. I feel like that looks kind of pretty and delicate. It kind of makes the back of your necklace look interesting too. And I feel like um, necklaces sometimes want to move on you, especially chokers. So having a pendant will help keep the weight in the center. That helps, you know, keep it from wanting to move one side or the other. But also having ties with a little dangling bead um, or extra pendant even at the back will help keep it sort of dangling down the back. And I feel like that provides a lot more interest to a necklace. So whether you're coming or going, you, you have like something pretty to look at here and something equally pretty to look at sort of down the back of your neck, which is great for the summer when a lot of us are wearing sort of big scoop neck, you know, necks or even sort of strapped, you know, dresses mm. and tank tops and whatnot. Here's a, here's a suggestion from Haley. Okay. Um, Haley would like to know if uh, you could make jewelry for like a ring for your finger. Oh yeah. With a decal, absolutely. Yes, um, now you'd probably want to do um, something a little I mean, like that would be a cute, that'd be a cute look for a thumb, but mm -hmm. most of the time your fingers are a bit small, so you probably want a smaller. What about pattern. something with a bit of a elas elastic elasticity? elasticity? Like, could you crochet with a like elastic thread? Would that be better for a ring? Mm, probably just just the way you what it's just the stitch you choose because mm. you can choose a stitch that like for example, if. You wanted to, so if any of you have made the perfect fit um, beanie winter hat that we did like an eon ago, it's um, it's my favorite winter hat tutorial. It's just you make a ribbed cuff to match your head size and then you just build a hat on top of it. So 
the ribbed cuff pattern. So if you were just going to sort of like chain three or four, which is really, really small to begin with, and then single crochet across sort of whatever chains are left after you skip one, and then single crochet back and forth, back and forth, but only using the back loops only. Are you talking about the lacy? So I'm the, talking- The lacy No, no, I'm, I'm talking about the, the perfect fit. Because I'm gonna link the it The custom here. beanie, the custom perfect fit beanie. I'm just basically trying to talk about the, if you wanted to see what I'm talking about, I'm talking about making a ribbed stitch like cuff. So if you made a really super tiny ribbed stitch piece of fabric with your thread and your hook, then you could make it to fit your finger. Um, and the rib stitch would have kind of a cool texture, but it, it would also like be a little elasticy. And so you'd have a less trouble getting it on over, say, your knuckle, because typically the knuckle, that second knuckle, is is the biggest part of our fingers, and that's what helps keep your rings on. And if you've got rheumatoid like me, they are a little bit bigger. <laughs> um, so having a little bit of uh, making a stretchy pattern in your ring would be would would work. It would help get it on. It would also be a very small little stitch. I think that would be really pretty. Yeah, good idea. Also, Haley. earrings is another suggestion. That I'm wearing came through. I'm wearing crochet thread earrings right now. Actually, my little. Mm -hmm. So now all I'm going to do is I finished my my choker. Oh my gosh, I love this. Love this. It's going to fit just perfectly. My little pendant is going to hang exactly where I wanted it to. <laughs> so now all I have to do is weave in my two tails. And I actually knotted the two tails together just for a little extra to make sure they don't want to come undone. So I, after I fastened off, I knotted the, the two ends happen to be right next to each other because that's where we start and then work our way back. And I'm just going to weave them in now. So, and all I did, same thing. I think we demonstrate this in the tutorial for the, um, the anklet as well, just sort of how to very simply weave in your little tails by kind of, um, weaving it in and out through your foundation chain row. And then you kind of double back on your, your string and you don't pull too tightly because you don't want to like cinch it up or anything, but there's nothing really fancy here. You're just making sure that the whole thing doesn't come undone. So just after you've gone <clears throat> woven it in a little bit, give it a stretch and then double back on yourself and this is such oh. therapy it's just i just love this i love i love crafting so much <laughs> no come on <laughs> i bet you never would there have guessed. is no way but i just love doing it on a summer <laughs> evening i can hear the birds kind of chirping and whining i heard chippy there. earlier did you hear chip i yeah, heard chippy too. i think I think he knows we're we're nearby, and he's like, nuts, he does. He can hear us nuts, talking. Yeah, nuts, 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 snacks. nuts Hello. Nuts. How about another one of those grapes? That was nice. <laughs> yeah. Can I have another grape, please? All right. So that's one tie in, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna weave the second tie back through the same place, and you you won't even see it after it's been woven in. So, and I will do this one too. And like we said, this is all shown. Should we do this zoomed in? No, nah, it's it looks better on the um, it looks better in the in the anklet tutorial. So if you're wondering how I I'm weaving in the little tails, we show you how to do that at the end of the bank the anklet tutorial. And of course, the tutorial is nice and clear. So I just we just kind of wanted to walk you guys through adding a pendant this evening, and more to the point, just sit and hang out with you for a bit. But I love this. I made a whole necklace. I've been wanting to do this. A lot of people suggested a necklace on when we did the, the the anklet, and it got me thinking about the '90s and how I had used to love wearing chokers, especially ones I'd made myself. And I always just sort of felt like that was a really quintessential summer piece of jewelry for me when I was a teenager. And I still love them. I still have a lot of them. Oh my gosh. Okay, it's done. Ta da! All right, I'm gonna. Put this on. So I've got my little loop at one end. So that's the loop we started with. And then I've got my two little beaded ties at the other end. So there's a little bead on the bottom. I'm going to make sure that the beads and the pendant are on the bottom. And I'm just going to take one bead, pass it through the loop, and tie the whole thing in a nice little knot. So 
not a nice reason to have the beads on. You can kind of feel the ends of your one and two. There. Looks right. good. How's it look, everybody? Can I turn around? Can you see the back? Hold on. I'm zooming in. Oh, yeah. Can you see the back? Oh, yeah. So that's the back. So the little ties dangle down. I think that's really cute. And then, of course, there's beads at the bottom. A little bit of decor. And then that's the front. That's the And the pendant hangs right where it's supposed to. And Fantastic. because we used a V-stitch, it's got a little bit of give. So you shouldn't even feel that on. In fact, I can't even feel that. So You don't even feel it no, on. No, I don't even feel it on. So it doesn't feel too tight. It's sitting exactly where it's supposed to. Very nice. Perfect. Oh. Looks great. Fabulous. Hey. Beautiful. Beautiful. Nice. Cute. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. And it's nice and summery. I feel like that's... Yeah, very summery. Yeah. So there we go. Awesome. Um, Quick note, a bunch of people were asking, I did say in the tutorial where I found these beads. Um, and once again, the beads I'm using for this, so size 10 crochet thread, I'm using a bead that's about three millimeters in diameter. At least it's got a hole big enough that I can pass the, the thread through it. I found this kit with everything in it you see here at the dollar store um, and this one too. So I found both of these at the dollar store a while ago. Whenever I see kits full of beads, I kind of can't resist them. So I pick them up. <laughs> but I especially love glass beads. Uh, glass beads, I feel, are often a better bet than plastic beads. And they're not necessarily any more expensive. Glass beads are less likely to have paint come off or to lose their color after, you know, being in the sun or exposed to your, you know, um, skin oils and stuff like that. So I would, and plus they just feel nice. They sound nice. They have a little more weight to them. Uh, glass beads don't usually have a seam. A lot of plastic beads have an actual seam around the middle or um, little uh, rough edges where they've kind of been <laughs> just sort of like clipping them off with the machines. So I, if you can get the glass beads, I recommend those because they just look nicer and they add a nicer kind of level to your to them, like a shimmer. real shine, yeah, yeah. real shimmer. Um, but if you only find, um, say, like plastic beads with a hole big enough, that's fine too. Mm -hmm. If you're making jewelry for kids, um, plastic beads, something bigger. Um, you know, something bright and, and maybe not for little, little it, not kids, little little no. kids, but I'm thinking like, you know, anybody five and up, like yeah. I know when I was five, I love my beaded mm -hmm. necklaces and stuff. Um, oh my gosh, I just remembered something. What charm? Okay. Eighties kids. There was this thing. I can't remember what it's called. It It's like this jewelry that was based on a plastic chain link necklaces bracelets and they, there were all these cute little like charms you could get that like clipped on everything was plastic everything was plastic but that but the charms yeah, that's were like, ringing a bell like there was everything like ice skates and a book yeah, and, yeah, like, and yeah. then you could like inter intermix them you're talking 80s or 90s 80s i was so obsessed with that stuff i can't remember what it was called but i absolutely loved it i love charm bracelets and charm necklaces that's probably <laughs> where that started though. someone had a good question um yeah i'd love it this is from Haley again. Where is she, where'd she go? Where'd you go, Haley? It was something about weaving in. Oh, yeah. yeah. She wanted to know why. She doesn't weave in her ends, and she wants to know why, like, you do and why you feel it's important to. Are we I talking? I think that was the question. Just sort of in the. Just there, in here this it is. case? Yeah. So could you explain the purpose of weaving in ends? Because I usually don't, and it. It stays where it should. Just wondering. Thanks. If you mean like any crochet project or just like a thread project, um, as long as you're, when you. Carol says snap beads. Snap beads. Yeah. Does that ring a bell? Snap the snap beads no, for those the were, necklace. Those were beads, oh, sorry, the beaded... those were beads that snap together. Oh. These are, this was like. It's picture... not GIMP. I'm not, I don't no, think it GIMP. was GIMP. Picture that of... was huge Pic... in the 80s. GIMP was massive. I still have some. <laughs> picture a chain link. Like a chain, like chains that link like this, but, yeah, but yeah, the, plastic. The, the, the machines had them. Yeah. The, uh, gotcha pong, or what do we call them here in the West? You know, the tick, 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 tick. like a bubblegum machine. The bubblegum yeah. machines, yeah. It was, it was like a chain link, plastic, charm bright colored, blast, charm kins, or something else. I have some of them and I love them too. <laughs> no, these Nostalgia. are. Nostalgia! Oh, I love charm kins so much. <laughs> yeah, I remember charm kins. Um, no, this was, this was like 
a bracelet, a necklace, whatever. It was bright colored plastic chain. And then you could buy a whole bunch of cute charms that just like snapped on and you could unsnap them and, and intermix them with like your bracelet or your necklace. And then you could, you could collect the charms. You could just trade them with your friends. And the charms were everything under the sun. Like they were little little animals, or they were yeah. They they tried to have everything. Everything. everything yeah, they had kind of like the way the Shopkins thing is now. The the one is now the fancy one. Oh, the the what um, are they called? Pandora. Pandora. How they have like a little bit of every. They have. Yes. They try to grab everything. And I have to say, the Pandora charms are really cute. There's a bunch that I really like, but they were not the these plastic kids charms were much more obvious. Like and cheaper. Were, and obviously cheaper. <laughs> but um, I love that. Anyway, this kind of makes me think of. Heidi it. says, "Are you talking about Lynx? Does that sound familiar? Lynx. Lynx. I'm sure they had some sort of. I'm gonna have to look it up name, later. Some sort of. Uh, I am. Trademark. I'm sure they did. Yeah. Lynx. We'll know. see if someone remember. we'll see if someone uh, whistles animals. It had everything. It had, yeah. I, and I'm even thinking of something that had googly eyes on it that I particularly liked because it would go like when I shook it next to my ear, I could hear the googly eyes shaking. So back to uh, Heidi's question. Uh, Haley's question. H Haley, Heidi. Was it Haley or know. Heidi? The weaving in. So weaving in. If you just cut your ends, first of all, if you knot your tail and you just cut it, you're Heidi. probably going to have like a little tail hanging out. And if you cut it close to the knot, you run a really good risk of it undoing, especially if you wash it. So usually when you knot off the end of your yarn, you want to leave enough tail that you can weave it back and forth a few times because that just locks it into place. And then after use and wear and washing and wear and, you know, and use and everything, that little tail isn't going to come out and that knot's not going to come undone because one of the most annoying things to have happen is to finish something, put all that time and energy into it, and then like give it to someone or put it in the washing machine and it the knot comes undone in the wash and you pull it out and the whole thing has come undone. It just is a nightmare. So that's why we, that's the, the that's the the, the the practical reason for weaving in ends. But then when you weave in a tail, you also don't have like a little end sticking out. You don't see the knot, you don't see an end sticking Flip out. Trying. You don't have like, like little like bits and pieces just kind of like sticking out any, <laughs> every which way. So that's, there's a, an aesthetic to weaving in the tail too. So flash charms. We're getting lots of ideas here. Flash charms, clip charms, Clip charms um, is exactly what it was. I don't, I can't, I don't, oh my gosh, isn't that terrible how the brain just goes boop? Yeah. Clip charm? If it hits us, we'll post it to yeah. like uh, the community tab <laughs> or Instagram or something. Bell charms. There's, I can't remember. It, was, it had to have been something charms. Charm yeah. had to have been in the title because that was the whole shtick. Yeah. It was charms. But I'm going to say it had some sort of like they were, name. Yeah, like, it definitely like had some Cabbage Patch Kids was, or oh, some sort of. Don't get me started <laughs> on 80s toys. We will be here all Has day. anyone out there, every once in a blue moon, we go down a rabbit hole where we look at, if you go, what is it, Pinterest? Pinterest. Where you can look up um, uh, 80s toys in their original packaging. Oh. And you you find stuff that you remember, but but you didn't. I've been pinning. You didn't know you remember. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. you're like, ah! And you yeah. can still see it on the shelf in <laughs> Toys R Us when you were like. Yeah, kid. it's funny. I highly recommend that to, um, to to everyone out there, nostalgia. even even the young even the young kids. Nostalgia toys. It's, it's fun to see old. I, stuff I've been like I've been pinning um, strawberry shortcake dolls and their little their little friends that they came mm. with. Oh. I love strawberry mm -hmm. shortcake. I still love that that doll series. Oh my goodness. Anyway. Um, I am about melted. <laughs> I'm gonna go straight from the uh, I might just jump right the computer the to the shower. Um so I'm gonna leave everything on. I just I just <laughs> let the live stream just go. I, I want to reiterate um, that we we this was just sort of us having sitting and having a little fun this evening. Hopefully we explained the math logic behind how to figure out how many beads and how to put on a, a pendant earlier on. We have two tutorials you might want to check out for more context. We did a beaded anklet a couple weeks ago. Which I have linked in the chat. Which Mr. I will also linked. link it uh, under we'll put the, it in the video. Description so box yes, once this is all finished processing. It. Oh, there's a nice breeze coming in. Oh, that's oh, nice. Oh, yeah, that's good. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
So this is the exact same pattern and, and much of it is exactly the same that we just did here. And that's just the anklet version. Same thing goes for a bracelet or a choker. And we also have a fun little covered crochet covered button tutorial. It looks different than this one. It's actually much fancier. Yes, we'll link that one too. So if you want to make your own pendant, um, you just need buttons and you can crochet a little bit of a, a pretty little crochet cover over your button, put on a bell little clips. tiny thing. Someone, Ida says, she, she looked it up on Google, bell clips. Charmkins? Charmkins are the little characters. <laughs> we're all still trying to discover. I had okay, so Charmkins were the little the little people that um they they came on a, a bracelet or a necklace and they think they also had like they lived in a little house or a little locket or something. Oh too. yeah, and you had like a miniature dollhouse in your child. I remember those. So obsessed like with those. Like the Polly Pocket sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, kind of like Polly Pocket. I remember the super super but little they, ones. The little charm kids. Yeah. I I, I actually I think, I think just um, I turned. I had three. I had three, and one I found at a garage sale years later. Yeah. I, you know. Didn't. Those I remember. I still have mine, and I actually turned my charm kids into jewelry that I wear right now because one of them is this little little. Fairy like Gosh, thing with white hair. She's so cute. She's a little purple lilac star in her hair. I love her. Anyway, and I have a little skunk. Anyway, I just love them. <laughs> I turn them into actual jewelry that I still wear. And every once in a while, someone will come up and go, Oh, is that a charm kid? And then we yeah. have like a freak out for like. What are the little ones you got in the blind bag? That that was something different. Uh, the little Hello Kitty thing. I got that's Hello Kitty. So I got Hello Kitty in a blind bag. Yeah. Um, my 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 Little Ponies. Oh yeah, those are kind of like mini. Well, that was a, those are the blind bag Milo Ponies. Those are blind bag. That was That's my different. biggest obsession yeah. when I was a kid. I have a lot of Milo Ponies. Okay, flash charms keeps coming up. Flash charms. Yeah. I'm looking it up. I'm looking it up. We're we'll gonna look it, it up now. You've got like my curiosity has peaked. I used to. I just. Ah, I love those things. And then, and I loved any kind of toy that you could trade with your friends, like jelly bracelets, girls. Oh, I remember those. Those things. Oh. Everybody and then you'd like those. turn them into long chains, and yeah. they had like the solid colors, yes. and then like the, the slightly see-through colors. Yes, and, I remember those. Uh, sparkle bracelets, the <laughs> ones that like had water in them. And yeah. Just, like, moved. Oh. <laughs> Happy. I love that stuff. Ah, nostalgia. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll uh, link those two um, tutorials so for you. So but the button bracelet, cover, the, the anklet, and the and button. The anklet from two. So that you ago. can make yourself your own pendant. If oh, you and want. by the way, for those of you that aren't aware, this is a, currently a live stream, but it will be archived when it's over. You can always rewatch it. Yeah, give it like 15, 20 minutes for it to finish processing, yeah, and, and then we'll add our little links and stuff. You can watch it from the beginning. You can um, pause. Especially yeah, if you came in halfway, if or if you're following along, you yeah. can pause. You can rewind. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. After it finishes process and you can pause it just like your regular you know like video but uh when they're live obviously you, you can you can pause a live but it basically just mutes it and then like you come back in and record it <laughs> and now everyone's throwing uh, uh all the old 80s toys oh. so uh care bears i was obsessed with care bears when i, I was a one kid around here. i loved the movie i love oh Care Bear yeah, Stare! Me, me, I was my, my favorite sister thing. watched that movie, I don't know, 10,000 <laughs> yeah, times? Yeah, 10,000 times. Um, Both your slap sister and bracelets. me. Slap bracelets. That was close. I think that was early Loom 90s. Loom bands. There's another one. This is from that was, Australia. That was Loom leading into the bands. 90s. Loom bands. Does that sound familiar? But those look like Holly Hobby. Ones. Does Holly Hobby? Sound Holly familiar? Hobby is a 70s toy. I know because I had Holly Hobby sheets from when I was Hello, people. Google. I don't. Popples? Anybody? Popples, I remember. Charm necklace. Anyway, we're rambling now. Lots of legs. It's the heat. The fluffy dogs. The anybody is <laughs> the cold showers. Uh, yeah, I remember know them. Were. They were amazing. <laughs> they were. I think they were my favorite. <laughs> I know it's hot in here. Okay, <laughs> we will close this one off, guys. We will see you on Friday. And uh, take care. Stay cool or stay warm. Whatever you need. Make sure you stay really hydrated. <laughs> Stay safe, stay healthy, have a great week. We'll see you Friday and um, come back in a little while while this is finished processing for those links if you want to get uh, <gasps> clear. What, 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 what? Aphrodite! Aphrodite, hi! Oh my gosh! We've been wondering where you were and if you were okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so Aphrodite has just given us a super, super chat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Nicely done. Good, good save there. I like that. Thank you, Aphrodite. <laughs> Glad I'm to see so you. happy to see that Aphrodite's okay. Glad to see you. Last oh, we heard from Aphrodite, she was having, she was having problems. She was having her, some uh, technical uh, issues. Serious technical issues, yeah. And so I'm happy to see you're back. Yay! Thank you.
you. So Aphrodite has a message for us yes. along with the with the super chat. <laughs> Hi, Jada, Mr. and Stitches. Dang, I just got in from the garden, Ugh. just harvested two pints of cherry tomatoes. Oh. Haven't been able to crochet like forever, but love you guys to death. Stay safe. Stay safe yourself. And those cherries sound really good. Cherry tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes. I love cherry tomatoes. They're well, so that's like, wonderful. They blow up in your mouth when you bite them. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, and on that note, everybody, please stay safe. Stay, stay sunny. <laughs> Everyone, yeah. Stay, stay hydrated. Stay safe. Stay crafty. Stay crafty. I'm so glad that we're a crafty bunch because it makes staying home and staying in and staying out of everybody's way so much easier when you've got lots and lots and lots to do. So, yeah. so these are nice little summery projects. We're going to try and have some more nice light summery projects for you guys over the next few weeks because it's hot. Uh, we will see you Friday for another uh, hangout session. And um, yeah, until then. Yeah, we'll see everyone on chill. Friday. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Have a good night. Stay cool. I'm going to jump in the shower. <laughs> you first? <laughs> we're going to be... There might be a fight. We're going to be fighting each other and like pulling on elbows. each other. Elbows. Like, yeah, elbows. I'm going to start sharpening my elbow now. All right. Good night, everyone. Bye, guys. Mm.